my question to you right off the get-go is, how would you handle this situation? We got a call about a boat that's been out of the water for three plus years. Unfortunate situation, the lady's husband died, as she said, left her with a couple messes, this boat being one of them. She called us and asked us to do some work. It wasn't any big deal at the time, so I went to look at it and then I went like, what the heck happened here? Because this is turning into one of those jobs that I hate doing because we're cleaning up after other mechanics. What had happened is she called the first mechanic, they came, broke a bunch of stuff, billed her, took the money, wouldn't come back. She hired a second mechanic, they came, broke a bunch of stuff, didn't finish the job, billed her, then wouldn't return her phone calls or respond back to her in any way. Through hauls and strainer scoops and all kinds of that hardware valves, and they had broken a bunch of stuff, stripped it out, we ended up having to clean up their mess. We had to drill holes. We had to drill out hardware that they broke off. I went for a walk with this lady and I said, listen, you're in over your head. You don't know anything about boats. This boat is in very rough shape. You need to sell it as is, where is. And she said, well, I'm hoping to be able to move it up north and we're gonna use it as a liveaboard at one of the marinas up north, but it has to go there under its own power because you can't tow a boat into the marina without it being under its own power. And I said, okay. I said, just remember, you get this thing in the water, your engines aren't going to start, or if they do start, there's going to be multiple problems. There's going to be electrical problems. The batteries all need to be replaced. Your air conditioning is not going to work. Your heads aren't going to work. Your plumbing is probably not going to work. Down to your lights. It's been sitting for too long and the boat was already in rough shape when they started. Well, lo and behold, they put the boat in the water. They managed to get the engine started. They had to hotwire the ignitions and both dripless couplings are just spewing water everywhere. So then they had to haul the boat back out of the water. Her and I talked, what, what do you wanna do? You want us to get started on this or what? And I'm like, this is gonna be expensive because we have to now take the running gear apart and everything is rusted to HE double toothpick. So that just makes the job even harder. And she finally said, she's Matt, I'm just gonna park the thing. Let me think about this. I'll get back to you. I'm hoping, hoping that she will put that boat up for sale and just get rid of it because it's just gonna be a money pit for her and she's already thrown a whole bunch of money at it. Sad situation. Anyways, yeah, those jobs, I hate them. Of course, she was crying, breaks my heart. What do you do? Uh, poor lady, she's in tough shape and she's putting on a brave face and trying to be tough, but she's way in over her head. So today we are here to install, it was supposed to be multiple through holes, but it turned out just to be this one right here. We got everything set, all the 5200 in the world to keep that thing together. We are just inside the boat where it pokes through. And we are connecting the hoses to the through hole itself. I'm just making sure that everything looks A-OK. -okay. It is quite the mission to get to this engine bay over here. You have to lift up these stairs that probably weigh about 50 pounds. Let's see if I can do this one hand. <laughs> Alright. How you doing down here, Ken? Oh, wonderful. <coughs> wonderful. Alright, TJ, what are you working on? Oh, you know, a little this, a little that. Could be more descriptive than that. Yeah. <laughs> the plywood that was mounted to the sides for the sea strainers were completely rotted out. So we chipped them out and replaced them with starboard and we clean this all up, make it look nice. So we're trying to ramp this boat up to get it ready for a splash. We're installing this pickup screen. We actually uh, just need to redo two of these screws. It was going in there and kind of tweaked itself a little bit and snapped one of the screws. So we're just going to reset them with some 5200 and put in some new hardware. And then we are upstairs mounting the, uh, the strainers uh, for the two smaller pickups in the back that we replaced the screens on there too and put some new hoses and some new uh, hose clamps so hopefully she'll be ready to go. Hopefully we have a couple simple little things to take care of. We'll see. I'm one of our clients that keeps their boat up north during the summer and now it's back down here. We got a couple air conditioning problems. They're not here right now but they're coming into town so we're gonna go take a look and see if we can get them straightened out. I know that one of them is tripping low pressure, so we'll have to probably put the gauges on that unit and service it up. And then I think there's a water leak problem. And I believe there also maybe one of the units is going off on high pressure, which usually means they're not getting enough uh, water flow to cool them down. It's a beautiful boat. You'll see it here in a second.
All right, let's uh, go check something. I think you said that the Flybridge AC, I'm gonna turn that on. Oh, it's a little warm in here. All right, I guess I gotta go find the circuit breaker for that. Boy, look at that. That came from this handrail. Nobody believes how dirty our air is down here. It's called the Sahara air layer, and it's actually dust that blows over from the Sahara Desert all the way across the ocean. Uh, let's see if we can find what we're looking for here. Uh, this is all DC. We need AC, which I think, yeah, right here. Flybridge AC right there. Let's turn that on. Okay, so that's in cool mode. Let's see if that stays running. Let's go down here and see if we can figure out. Now, what do you guys think? I think that's a really nice feature, having a door that actually opens instead of a sliding door. You know, it's pretty nice. This side opens too, so you can have them open. Plus they have uh, screens, so here, it's pretty nice. Got that set for 75. Got the blue is our suction, that's low pressure. And this one right down here is high pressure. Let's see if I can get that one. So it just went off on low P5. So this must be the galley one. So it's running. So that one's on. So I think I'm on the wrong one. Let's see what my other choices are here. VIP dress galley. All right, Chris, what are we doing here today? We've already started it. We're actually uh, here today with the replacement part, but we'll give you a rundown of everything that we did. So the original complaint was that the starter trim tab was not moving. First thing he did, obviously, is just came in, op tested it, turned it on. Now we could hear the pump running in uh, every direction that we tried to go. Actuators just were not extending. Once he came on board, fired everything up, ran them a couple of times. We could hear the motor was actually running every time we hit the switch. There was no real uh, thought that the motor was bad, but in order to test it, what we did is so there's the it's called the HPU. That's actually the hydraulic motor for it. All of those colored cables that are coming to that box right there. That's the auto retract switch. What we did is the two hydraulic lines that are going into it, we just switched them. Because all they are is they are hardwired. They actually come out of there. It's kind of hard to see, but once they come out of there, they split into two because this is actually a four actuator system. So two for each side. So we just switched them. We watched for to see if the problem shifted from one side to the other. It did. That kind of tells me two things. One big thing is that that starboard side actuator is actually not faulty at all. The wiring and the controls from the switch going to there is not at fault either. And then in fact, that is probably the solenoid that is inside the HPU is either stuck, corroded. That's like an $80 part. We went and picked one up. So today we're gonna pull that HPU out, throw a new solenoid in there. Hopefully that rectifies the issue, which it should. Once we get that in there, we'll op test it and see that it works. What do you think? It's gonna work today? Yes. All right. All right, Chris, what contraption have you made? All right, so we got the HPU out. Just verify to see what was going on with the solenoid. But these are your three. Technically there's five wires that go into this ground, starboard, port, run forward, run back, I think is what it is. But as long as you apply 12 volts with a good ground on here, you can individually actuate all the stuff that it's supposed to do. So that's kind of loud right here, but the right one is, I believe, is our faulty solenoid. So when you touch that, you should hear a really solid click. There's a lot of motors going on here, but it's like a soft click. And then here, it's a very loud, predominant click. And all that is, is, is opening and closing the solenoid. Uh, we're just gonna go forward and replace the solenoid. I'd run the motor for you. If you touch these two, it'll run the motor in different directions, but I don't feel like spewing all of that uh, hydraulic fluid all over the place. So we'll move forward. All right, we got a 911 call, not really just a big yacht that doesn't have air conditioning. So we're going to a 85 foot Pacific Mariner. The chilled water plant is down for a temp sensor. I brought all the temp sensors I got because this is an older unit. So who knows which ones it has. Hopefully I have the right one. If not, I'll try to see if I can get one overnighted. I think it's that big white boat down there. I don't know, maybe the one on the end. I don't know. Let's see if this is it. They said G-Doc, this is G-Doc. I'm guessing it's this one. How much do you think a new one of these costs? Make a guess, leave me a comment. Yep, here we go. Pacific Mariner. Ah, heck, I gotta go back. I can't get down here. 
I don't want to jump with, I got my tool bag, so there we go. Now we're in the right place. So I did this as a favor for a friend of, uh, he's called my friend, said, hey, who do you know? And Bill's like, well, you got to get Matt. The guy he threw up, used my buddy's name. And so I said, okay, I'll hook you up. So changed my schedule around and we'll see what we can do with anything. Sorry, we didn't get much footage on that. Uh, it was rather technical and in-depth and um, had to get some tech support. What it turned out to be was a temp sensor was just like a tiny bit out of resistance, which caused the problem. And it was kind of like, didn't happen all the time, but it was happened enough where it was causing problems. But uh, it was uh, intermittent is what I'm trying to say. We got it changed out. The plant is running good. Three, three big chillers, uh, 180,000 BTUs each for that big girl over there. I wish I could have taken you inside, but I couldn't. Yeah, I wish I could have got more footage, but uh, like I said, I was down in a noisy engine room in the engineering space and uh, it would have been hard to film down there. Wrapping it up for the day. So a radio station asked us to come by and uh, we're gonna shoot a commercial, I guess. So that's where we're headed right now. Radio station has asked us to come by today so that we could talk about our small business. They wanna interview us and see what we've done in the Florida Keys for the last 10 years. That's what I said. <laughs> Hope you're ready. I am. You're nervous, aren't you? Oh yeah. I see you got the butterflies. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm nervous. All right, me too. Can you tell? Scared. Oh. Good to see you all. Hey, I'm Michael. How are you? you I'm Matt. Matt. <laughs> Matt. Nice to meet you, Michael. Hello. Okay, so we are about ready to start, if that's okay. This is going to be Key West Local Business Spotlight. Matt and Carrie Ann Graff, good morning to both of you. Good morning. How are you doing? Doing very well. And let me also mention, uh, since we are nearing Veterans Day, I want to thank both of you for your service to our country as proud veterans. We are certainly proud to be in your midst and a lot of gratitude on our part for your service to our country. So you're a veteran-owned business and you served admirably, both of you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Michael. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much for the mm -hmm. kind words. Indeed. Well, they are heartfelt, but also you have continued to work hard in your businesses now, Mobile Marine Services and also Key West Boat Repair and Maintenance. So this is certainly a very good area to be in if you are servicing boats. Most certainly a lot of people have a great need for boat repair as well as you do the work you're promising to do and you do it very very well a lot of different services being offered by mobile marine repair services and you gave me a very long list of uh, all the different things that you have the expertise to address yes i work on engines i work on pretty much anything that you can call me for i'm a working boss i don't sit in an office i'm actually i get my crew rolling in the morning and if they need help i go help or i go on calls myself let me ask you this you both came from the navy right so you have maritime and boating experience was that the motivation for getting into this business here uh, it's kind of a funny story <laughs> uh -oh. so i came down and i was working on a government contract right. after work i was fixing all my friends boats for free oh um well you know, that's not sustainable <laughs> <laughs> no. and my wife carrie ann said uh well why don't we start our business or start a business? Yeah. And that's how Mobile Marine Repair Service was born. And uh, we just went from there and we've been working and chugging away ever since. Wow. To be honest with you, I've been fixing stuff since I was a little kid. <laughs> yeah. I grew up working on a dairy farm in uh, rural Wisconsin. So there was no, oh, it's broke, call the repair guy. It was, uh, it's broke, let's get it fixed. We need to get these crops in. Oh, absolutely. Well, and that certainly gives you a great background for our work ethic as well. And as you both said, and Matt said early on, you know, he does tell the customer the truth and you're upfront with them from the start. And uh, that's, that's another case in point. So again, it is Mobile Marine Repair Services and Key West Boat Repair and Maintenance being uh, spotlighted today on Key West Local Business Spotlight. Matt and Carrie Ann Graff with us. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Michael. We appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you also, again, emphasize, thank you for your service as proud veteran. Have a great day. Thank you, sir. What do you think? How do we do? I don't know. So for our first radio interview, <laughs> yeah. when we were heading to the studio to do our radio commercial, I was amazed that we walked by this store and my wife didn't stop to look at something in the window. and. Of course, we didn't make it back to the car, and she stopped. I was focused on the notes, so of we were prepared. You were. Yes. On the way too. Yes. Now, on the way back, I'm done. Hey, I got a great idea. Okay. 
Okay. You and Casey go shopping. Yeah. I'll take the car home and she can drop you off. That way, <laughs> that way I don't have to go shopping. I'm not shopping. Baby, you don't take me shopping. I know I don't. I don't like to. <laughs> what you complaining about then? I, I prefer shopping on Amazon. Of course.